Hi guys, it's Susan with Canines First. You are watching our first part in a three-part series about crating. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to pick your crate. I'm gonna to talk to you about three things specifically. I'm gonna to talk to you about how you pick the right size of crate, and I'm gonna to talk to you about which type of crate to pick. And then lastly, I'm gonna to talk to you about how many crates you should get. Yes, I said how many. Now, hold on, we're gonna get there, okay? But before we get into that, I wanna say quickly that crating for some people can be a hot button topic. They really are opposed to the idea of it, and I certainly understand why. However, I think that in addition to crating, helping you to meet your goals with the dog, whether it be uh, the goal of being disciplined, uh, getting them used to being alone for a short amount of time, or most importantly, probably housebreaking, I think you really need to do it for their sake. Because even though you may see your life as not changing right now, maybe you work from home or in some universe, your dog gets to be with you all the time. There is a good chance that one day your life will change and your dog may need to be crated for some reason. Your dog could get injured and need to be on crate rest, or you could get injured and you may need help caring for your dog. And perhaps they have to go to somebody's home for them to help you with them. And maybe they've got other dogs. So I could think of a million scenarios, maybe not a million, maybe a dozen, where it's probable that your dog may need to be crated someday for its own safety. So if you are getting a new dog or you're getting a puppy, I want you to consider teaching that puppy to crate and being accustomed to crating for their own good. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing that you have to decide is what size of crate do I need? And my personal determination is I like to figure, okay, how long is my dog? I measure them the best that I can while they're squirming from their front toes to their back toes when they're splayed out in splute or froggy doggy position. And then I like to add six inches to that. And that is my minimum for humane reasons, okay? You can have a crate much bigger than that if you want, if they're made, if they're on the market for you to purchase, but I want you to at least add six inches. I do not want you to worry about the housebreaking factor when it comes to size. I'm gonna to get to that later, which we'll do in the getting your dog accustomed to uh, housebreaking section of our three-part series. When I tell you to add six inches to the crate, I am talking about the length. The height isn't gonna matter. The width isn't gonna matter if this is the length and this is the width and get your door of your crate here. It's the ooh, length or the depth that matters to me. So as long as the crate is as long or as deep as their body is when they are splayed out, don't concern yourself with the width or the height. Okay, so that takes care of sizing. Then the next thing you need to figure out is what type of crate you want. Now, if I'm gonna get a bird dog, even if it is a puppy, or I don't know, just anything that is medium to large when it's grown, I'll probably get a wire crate. I'll probably get a wire crate for all of the crates I choose. Remember I told you we we're gonna talk about how many. Um, if I'm gonna get a terrier, or I'm gonna get a toy breed, I might get a clamshell crate, okay? Those are the two main. You've got the wire and you've got the clamshell, also known as the hard crate or the airline crate. And there's pros and cons to both, okay? But I just sort of try to figure out, well, what do I think my dog would like? And that's the one I go with. That's the one I'm gonna go with for its overnight crate because that's when I really need him to be happy. That's the one I'm gonna for sure put in the bedroom, okay? If you don't know your dog and your dog is 
a mixed breed and you just, you can't determine what you think will make that dog the happiest, then just pick the one that you think you would like the best. So here's some pros and cons of those two main crates or types of crate. The, the wire crate folds flat and it's about eh, maybe this thick, even the biggest one, once you've got it all folded, folded up flat and that can easily go under the bed or be tucked away somewhere else if you need to put away like under the sofa as an example. But it is a little bit noisy when a dog is tippy tapping around in it. Okay, so that's a con of it. I think it's a pretty easy clean. Typically, you can just pull the pan out, depending on what's in it, and you can just take care of the pan part of it. Um, only on your worst days do you have to take a toothbrush to the wires of the crate. Whereas the the clamshell crate is a bit more annoying to clean out. Uh, most of us don't fit in there. If we do, it's kind of gross to be, you know, enclosed inside the clamshell while we're trying to crate or uh, clean it. So then you've got to take it apart to clean it out. Um, but what I care about more than anything, more than my preferences is if my dog has to go in a box, what type of box is he going to hate the least? And on that, I make my decision. And if you make the wrong decision, it's not a big deal you can change it up later, okay? I want you to just get it out of your head that you're gonna put a dog that you don't know well or that isn't trained or that is a puppy in a soft-sided crate. You can graduate to that later, but uh, you will be sorry if that is how you start. There are crates on the market I refer to as tiger cages. They are meant to hold any dog inside a crate. Uh, meaning there's no escape possible. They are extremely expensive and only in a couple of cases in 20 years have I ever thought we had no other choice. So you can just know they exist, but set that aside as something you need to consider. Just You just need your basic wire or your basic clamshell that many retailers are gonna have available for you, okay? All right, finally, the third thing you need to consider is how many you might want to have. Unless you live in a studio or a tiny home, I really want to encourage you to have two crates, even if you, you know, you don't have upstairs and downstairs, especially if you have upstairs and downstairs, but even if you have one story home like I do, you will be so much happier if while you're training or getting to know this dog, you have one crate in the common areas of the home where you spend a good amount of your time and you have a, a crate in your bedroom. And then consider if you're going to want to crate the dog when you travel with the dog by vehicle, if you need a third one for your car or SUV or whatever it is you may have. All right, so we've got size. Okay, you're gonna add six, six inches to the length of your dog when they're splayed out. We've got type. Do you want clamshell or do you want wire? Okay. And we've got um, how many? Okay. I want you to, unless, like I said, unless you have a tiny home or a studio, you'll be happiest if you have two and um, a third for the vehicle. If you want it, can you take yours to the vehicle every time you travel? Of course you can. I cannot. It, it will break me. So um, I usually will keep our travel crates in our SUV. Um, real quick, I wanna say that when you're choosing the type, you might want, like my terrier, he's gonna sleep best in the clamshell, but I liked him, he's out of this phase now. When I first got him, I had a hard, or I'm sorry, a wire crate in the living space, because I wanted him to be able to see um, around him, and that's where he would have to go occasionally when, um, we were out living our lives in the living area, then I like to put them in there, okay? So you don't have to get exactly the same, but if you are gonna get just one, make sure it's the one that make your dog the happiest. And, um, but otherwise get two and like I said, same or different, it, it doesn't really matter, but you definitely want to have some consideration with the sleeping part of it. If you think they're gonna sleep better in clamshell, that's the way you wanna go. Okay, so that was our 
first part in our three-part series. In the next video, I'm going to tell you how we get these babies accustomed to being in their crate, okay? So I hope you found this helpful. Please like if you did, and I hope that you will subscribe because I want you to see all of our videos. I certainly don't want you to miss the next one, which I'm sure you would think is the most important in regards to crating. And I thank you very much. Again, I'm Susan with Canines First, and I'll see you next time.